might drive all the way back next week just to get that sweet potato pie. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Party little. I'll see if I can't get Jacob to drive it back. Yeah. Well, that'll be two weeks for Thanksgiving. I thought they had it the week before. Well, maybe they did. You better call them and check. 528 <laughs> Food is the number. All right. I'll call for it. <laughs> Or I'll go in and take a picture of it and send it to you. It is good. I really enjoy their Coconut food. Pie, now you got to stop this. At least wait till the end of service. Or close. <laughs> <laughs> they open now. No, they close at uh, well seven, I think. So, uh, Do y'all go there often? Uh, Comes and goes, sometimes pretty often. They're the only thing right there, aren't they? Yeah, it's the only thing in town. That building was where I had my first public job, grocery on the other side, back in the 70s. Wow. Kathy, did you get everybody's name? Mark and Jacob Stevens and Matt Chode, all out of, I won't say Huntsville, what is it, Plain Dealing? No, it's Louisiana. What's New it? Market. New Market, sorry about that. I sure say New Dealing. I had to ask Matt what y'all's town was the other day. For some reason, I've got a mental block on that town, but I'm going to work on it. And so. Yeah, I'm early now. It is STEV, right? No. It's PH? Okay. Sorry about that. I should know. I think I got you in my phone here as V, so I need to change that. Just like our county judge. Really? Yeah. Well, you remember you saw the sign there on the... Mm, that's right. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> when y'all were hunting there, he had a uh, panel truck. I may need him if I'm ever an outlaw in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> How are y'all doing, Sherry? Hey, Caden. No class or at least teacher tonight. crowd may be a little light just due to the cold and everything. Of course, not nearly as cold as last night. Got about 20 seconds. Well, no, I said 20 seconds. It just beeped. I looked at it wrong. It is 6 o'clock. It's good to have everyone here this evening. Uh, Ruby's not with us. She is listening, though. She's uh, in Minnesota uh, for a uh, covering uh, for a tech site, uh, an Apple-related convention. And uh, I went with her two years ago, and she went last year and this year. And, uh, of course, night before last, it was four degrees up there. But this morning, I got up, it was 14 here and 21 there. Uh, I thought, uh, but Ruby, they got pretty good little snow up there this afternoon. Uh, I would say about like we did here, maybe a little bit more. But And so they always have this convention in Minnesota in the fall or November, and it gets so cold. They announced the day next year in San Diego. So that'll, that'll be a good change of venue, and it's going to be in September. Aaron's listening to us. Ruby's listening in Minnesota, so I don't know who all is listening. Mom's at home listening, so it's good to have all here. It's good to have our visitors. Of course, Matt Choate was here Sunday. And then uh, Mark and Jacob Stevens from uh, New Market, Alabama, just north of Huntsville. Can't get much north of Huntsville, can you? I mean, there's not a lot of room there. Got a little bit. And uh, so, of course, they're no strangers to us. As a matter of fact, when Matt called me, I guess, Friday coming up, I, uh, I'd sort of been looking for y'all. And because uh, the new deer season was opening up, and I thought y'all might be up here pretty soon. But... Uh, We'll sing a couple of songs, and then I'll ask uh, Mark visiting with us to lead us in our opening prayer. Uh, oh, I was going to announce a couple of things. One, I'll pick up Ruby at the airport tomorrow in Louisville and bring her back. It's going to be turned right around. She's going to Arkansas Saturday. We didn't plan on going back this soon, but her dad found out he has some cancer on his forehead, and they want to remove it, and they want to do it Monday, and it's too far for them to drive. So Ruby's going to come. Just sort of land, turn right around, go to Arkansas, probably for the better part of a week. And uh, she is listening now. She's in her hotel room there in Minnesota. Not a congregation close and not easy to get out. She has no transportation. So 
we don't even know of a congregation nearby there. So she's worshiping and studying with us uh, online tonight. That's uh, Ruby doesn't get to listen online very often. I know one of her favorite songs is, let me find it here, To Canaan's Land, I'm on my way. Or do you have another request, Ruby? And let me find the number here. It's in the higher numbers. 584. Let's sing a couple songs, then we'll have Mark to lead us in prayer. <coughs> to Canaan's land I'm on my way Where the soul never dies My darkest night will turn to day Where the soul never dies No sad farewell No tear dim where all is love and the soul never dies. A rose is blooming there for me where the soul never dies. And I will spend eternity where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim die. Where all is loyal and the soul never dies. A love light beams across the fall where the soul never dies. It shines to light the shores of home where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim night. Where all is loyal and the soul. My life will end in deathless sleep where the soul will never die. And everlasting joys I'll reap where the soul will never die. No sad no tears. Where all is joy and love, and the soul of man never dies. I'm on my way to that fair land, where the soul will never die. And there will be no parting, and the soul of man never dies. It's really nice to have some extra bass voices tonight. Let's uh, sing number 448. I know it's one of Allie Rose's favorite songs. We got far better bass than me here tonight. And Sharon, when she came in, reminded me to announce, <laughs> I mean, just seeing her made me think of it. Tomorrow night will be the ladies' Bible class. It's going to be repeated class one because of the technical issues that we had. It'll be on... Uh, <coughs> Google Hangouts, and so Sharon, I think you're one of the last ones I haven't talked to yet to, to make sure you've got that on your phone and that it uh, works and everything. So Ruby will have that at eight, but she's in Minnesota right now. She should be back to Louisville. Plane is scheduled to land at 4.30. Should give us, assume it's on time, but even if we're not home, I'll, I'll drive and she can conduct the class rolling. She's got the book with her. And so, but tomorrow night will be ladies Bible class. 
And then Friday will be home, and Ruby turn right back around and go to Arkansas Saturday. So very busy days coming up for her. Number 448, then we'll have Mark to lead us in prayer. There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new. It will help them to be true. Ring it out, ring it out. Ring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and Ring out the news that makes men free to all the lost of every nation. Saving grace, make it known in every place. Ring it out, ring it out. Help the needy ones to know Him from whom all blessings flow. Ring it out, ring it out. Ring out. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and doubt. Ring out the news that makes men free to all the lost of every nation. Sin and doubt to sweep away till so dawn the better day. Ring it out, ring it out. Till the sinful world be one for Jehovah's mighty son. Ring it out.
Bless them as they strive to do your will. Pray that you give them strength. Pray that they would stand for the truth. We pray for Marty as he ministers and as he preaches here. And we pray that you bless him with good health. And he and Ruby as they serve. We pray that you bless them and give them many years to do your will and to serve this congregation here. And Father, we pray for and thank you for our great nation. We're thankful, Father, that we can travel this nation and that we can find congregations of brethren that teach and preach the truth. We pray, Father, for the churches in the land. We pray that you would strengthen those congregations who stand for the truth. We pray, Father, that we'd be shining lights to those that we're around. We pray, Father, that they might see the truth proclaimed and hear it proclaimed in these congregations. And we pray, Father, that we'd be the strength of the land. And we pray, Father, for our nation, for those who lead us, for our president. We pray for peace in the land. We pray that you give them the wisdom, Father, to make decisions on our behalf. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings and the abundance of the blessings that you provide for us. We thank you for the church, for your word. We thank you, Father, for Jesus, for his precious blood that he shed for us. We thank you, Father, for the example that he is to us, his teaching that we find contained in your word. We thank you, Father, for that great scheme of redemption and the plan of salvation that we find contained within it. We thank you, Father, that you've blessed us with the full knowledge of your revelation and your will for us. We pray again, Father, that you be with us throughout our service tonight. We pray that you bless us through this week. We pray, Father, that you would forgive us when we fall short of your will. And you strengthen us when we face temptation. And we ask all these things through Christ's name. Sing two more and then we'll have our classes for the evening, number 51. Number 51. Bring thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. Let's sing this and we'll have our Bible classes for the evening. 394. <clears throat> oh, listen to our wondrous story, counted once among the lost. Yet one came down from heaven's glory, Saving us at awful cost. Who saves Who but God's Son upon the cross? He died for you. Believe it, thou in heaven interceding. No angel 
could his place have taken? Highest of the high, though he, the loved one on the cross forsaken, was one of the Godhead three. Son up on the cross, he died for you. Believe it, thou art an interceding. Will you surrender to the Savior, to his scepter humbly bow? You too shall come to know his favor. He will save you, save you now. Who but God's Son upon the cross? He died for you. Believe it, thou art heaven interceding. Okay, let's have our classes. Okay, looks like we're going to have one little one for a class tonight. Turn, if you will, here to Isaiah chapter 3. We just began two weeks ago a study of Isaiah. With 66 chapters, it's going to be quite a lengthy study. And it looks like someone just logged in from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I have guesses anyway as to who it could be. Of course, Ruby is in Minneapolis tonight. It's chilly there. They had nice little snow today. It's not too much different here. Showing here is 29, Minneapolis is 26. Really not too much difference at all uh, right now. So, Okay. Just a moment here. It is good to have each one here this evening. And um, we'll go over these questions. We have quite, well, I thought the crowd was going to be really light tonight, and then we had quite a few to come in. Appreciate each one taking time to do so, and those who are uh, listening online. Let's just go over the questions. Next week will be a very short lesson. Isaiah 4 is only six verses. And I, I started to just combine it with five, but as I read the chapters, I thought it's going to detract too much from each one. So next week we'll just do a four, or chapter four alone. But let's go over these and uh, randomly pick names here to ask the questions. Adam, number one. Uh, is it chapter one, uh, verse one? It is. Okay, number two, Mike. In verse four, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Okay, number three. Let's see, Allie Rose. Okay, number four, Larry. <coughs> Verse nine, he showed their governments the witness against them, and they declared their sin in Sodom, that had it not woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Okay, number five, we don't have a Chris here tonight. Kathy? It's verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women are their oppressors. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy house. Okay, number six. John? Okay, number seven. It's me. It's verse 16. 
Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Number eight. Andrew. Number nine, Stuart. Verse 24, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a gurgan of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Okay, and number ten, Sharon. Okay, we'll go over this chapter and uh, make some comments as we go. Where's Stuart at tonight? Is he on the road? Yes, he was making his way around the Yeah. It takes a long time. I can imagine. Well, when I was in college at Freed Hardeman, my roommate lived in Atlanta. And uh, he commented even then, this was in the, in the 70s. From North Atlanta to South, the suburbs was 70 miles then. I can't imagine now. It's just it's Georgia. And uh, I wanted to say, oh, before we get started, I had these to show. Uh, this was Ruby's view from the hotel room, same view we had when we were there, but she's on 17th floor now. Minneapolis, the big part of town's back on the other side of the hotel. But I'll show you that view to compare with the same picture today. It's gotten a little wintry there. And so, a nice little dusting of snow, wasn't anything super major. But it, it, it was cold, of course, there's such a far north latitude anyway. Um, I don't drive very much, and I took Ruby, I mean, I don't drive big driving, uh, not city much. Louisville's almost more than I can handle as far as the city. But I do use Google Maps to navigate, and I actually had two cell phones going up. I had my iPhone, I also have an Android, so I had them both navigating, but I learned a big difference. I'm sure Stuart using Android does, and I don't think it does this on iPhone. I had Google Maps. It would warn me of objects in the road up ahead. It was really amazing, you know, and it would say, there's a disabled vehicle up ahead, and sure enough, Ruby point out, it was right there, and it, it would uh, a warn of objects in the road, and also said there's a speed trap up ahead. Of course, that was no concern for me. They'd probably hurry up, you know get on through so it's amazing where technology has come you can see it on your iphone screen but it doesn't announce it to you and so it actually makes driving quite handy to get the heads up that hey there's somebody stopped up ahead i know john uses android and it's a very handy feature he was noting i didn't mean to digress too much but let's get into the chapter here isaiah chapter three hopefully Stuart is listening i sent him the link and I know, of course, Ruby's in Arkansas listing. I know Aaron's in uh, Maryland listing, so we're spread out all over the eastern U.S. anyway. This chapter deals with the pending punishment of God's people for their sins. That's what this chapter is talking about, of course. Isaiah is a long book. We're going to see very much uh, about you know, things brought upon God's people because of their sins. I appreciate what Mark said in his prayer, and it's one of the reasons I sung Break Thou the Bread of Life, that we open up the Word and, and we study it, and he's talking about finding people that are following the Lord wherever you travel. You'll find that when you find people that just open and study the Bible, not doctrines of men or teachings of mankind, but just the Bible. And it has to be the same thing, because when you sow the seed, that's the only thing that can germinate is the truth and so let's see what that god's people what was coming up for them and this foretells the desolations that are coming up on Judah and jerusalem because the babylonians would be coming uh with the 70 years of captivity and other things as well so we'll go over these verses and uh, make some comment for behold the lord the lord of hosts usually when it says that term's used a lot the lord of hosts. Uh, 
something that follows. Uh, war, warfare, an organized army. It can be the sun, moon, and stars. It often refers to whatever the large group is, the Lord is the Lord of them. He is the leader. It can be an army or stars or whatever. And that term is used so much in the prophets. If I just look up Lord of hosts, uh, you'll see it so much. I think in Zechariah, I was going to say, you know, Malachi is used a lot. Zechariah, it's a very short book, but look how many times the Lord of hosts is used. Just right there in Zechariah, it totally fills the screen. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and Judah. This would be the northern kingdom, would have been Jerusalem, Judah. Uh, was the southern kingdom. The stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Well, the word stay is a very common word, but not in this context. It's your supply that you have. He's going to take away what that you have of your bread, food, the water that you have because of their sins. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Order. He's going to take away these men of leadership, of uh, quality, out from among them is what was going to happen. They were just going to be taken away. Their land and their society as they knew it was going to be ravaged and changed because they were going to be taken into captivity for 70 years. Are there any comments? <laughs> Aaron said we need a, a Google app that warns beware there's a temptation up ahead and she makes a good point. Uh, you know, we, we do and of course we have the Bible which is our guide and it's our road map that warns us of dangers up ahead. And he's warning them of things to come. And instead of these honorable men taken from them, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Now, I, I don't think he's talking literally here, but it would be people that were like children, that were babes, no doubt spiritually and from other lands. People were coming in to rule over them. And uh, great changes were coming because of their sins. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Society was going to be turned on its head, as they knew it. Uh, oppression, one to another. A child would behave himself improperly against the ancient, and a base person, which is very, you know, low person, base, against the honorable person. You would see a lot of changes of their structured order in society. And he's warning them this is to come. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. I was reading this oh, a few days ago, preparing for tonight. And I thought they would select people to be their leader that just for any reason, well, you have clothing, why don't you be our leader? And so they were going to be in such a destitute shape that they wouldn't even be able to hardly find people to rule over them. And they would make the, uh, the choice of their rulers just simply based on their attire. And a little side note, it's almost not any different today. People choose things and people because of their, their wealth and the way that they look and the way that they, uh, you know, they're standing in society. And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer. For my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. So the people they even choose to be over them will say, I can't do this. In my house, I don't have food or clothing. Don't make me a ruler of the people. Their society was going to totally fall. And, and it did. Uh, of course, we know Zedekiah was you know, a puppet king set up by Nebuchadnezzar. And he rebelled against ne the Lord and against Nebuchadnezzar. And of course... Nebuchadnezzar took him and killed his children, his sons, and put out his eyes. And so that was the, the end of it, as they knew. Of course, Isaiah, we, well, we learned from Isaiah 3, or Isaiah 1, what chapter, or what kings, I'm not speaking correctly here, uh, Isaiah was under. He was under at least four kings. Of course, probably maybe the, one of the most notable was Uz, uh, Uzziah and Hezekiah. But 
Isaiah prophesied during Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And so there were some good times here. Hezekiah was a very good king. And the one, you know, added 15 years to his life. He brought running water to the city. Uh, I say running water. We was talking about the uh, right before services, the water that we have now. And uh, he built a conduit and brought it to Jerusalem. The rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might, he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city. They were prospering so well that during the times of Hezekiah, they had running water in Jerusalem. Probably not a faucet to every house. It could have been, but a pool or some kind of uh, reservoir, and they uh, brought it into the city. And so, and this was probably no small task because physically what is, I won't say unique about Jerusalem, but what's different than Jerusalem and every city around about it? It's on a hill. And uh, it was no doubt hard to get water uh, up because they, they had to raise it in elevation to get it up there. And so they may have had some kind of pool. I won't go into the physics of it because I don't know. But, you know, why, that's why you go into every small city. You see a water tower. There's one across the road here uh, just on the other side of the cemetery. And that's why water towers are elevated because the higher they are, the more pressure there is. The, the weight and the gravity, there's, you know, you can look it up online, so many pounds per square inch for every foot or 10 feet that it goes up. So that's why you see them all about the same height. It's enough to give pressure to the city. They don't have pumps to give pressure at your faucet in town. They have gravity. And so, but then pumps can if something happens. And so Hezekiah, they had learned it, and they were prospering well. But Isaiah's telling them that you're going to be so ravaged, you won't even have anybody to rule over you. And then they'll say, I can't, because I don't have clothing or bread, and I can't do this. Verse 8, here, very plainly, For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. So all the good things that Jerusalem had built up, uh, they were very advanced. They did have running water uh, into the city, at least. Uh, word in the King James, you don't think about being in the Bible much, but was engines. They, uh, Uzziah. I see the two kings I've mentioned was during the time of Isaiah, two, these two kings. Uzziah, made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the boards to shoot arrows and great stones. I guess that's what we would think of as catapults. And so because of this, his name spread abroad, but he lifted up his heart after this. So during the times of Isaiah, they had built catapults. They could fire arrows and great stones. They had running water. But because of their tongue and their doings, Against the Lord, he caused them to fall. And I can't help, and I noticed that Mark in his prayer was talking about giving thanks for our, our nation. It is a great nation. It was based upon, you know, faith in God in the Bible. The founding fathers did. Uh, people that are against the Bible, against having any religion in our, you know, society. Uh, that's the way that it was, though. It was founded. They, they don't like that, but it was founded upon that. The Bible gives a good, solid foundation for any nation. And they turned from the Lord and provoked him. They were falling. The show of their countenance does witness against them. The way they were shows why I'm doing this. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Boy, I tell you, there's never a truer verse for 2019 than this. Declaring sin as Sodom and not even trying to hide it. People are proud of their sins. So much so, at least every year, they have what? A pride parade. Pride's a sin in and of itself, but being proud for a sin, they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul. That's a Greek word for woe. There's just the worst terrible thing you can think of. It's often double, it's doubled or tripled for emphasis. I'm still working on the lesson, more in my mind at this point, of the triple things that are mentioned in the Bible. There's only, I think, what, five things are mentioned in a row, triple. One, the Lord in Revelation, he says, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth uh, for the devil's coming down having great power. And then also he says, holy, 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 uh, quite the opposite. Uh, 
I want to make sure that was the verse uh, where he says. No, he just says, that's why I looked it up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. But he says, woe, woe, woe. In another passage uh, in Revelation. I don't want to get too far off here. And... Uh, Well, I'm trying to see. I apologize here. The passage were that the right there, Revelation 8:13. I just clicked on the wrong one. He heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. And that's interesting. You know, I'd never put this together to now. There's only, I think, five things are repeated three times in a row. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Holy, holy, holy! Revelation 4:8. Uh, the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. I think Isaiah says that. Oh, earth, 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 is repeated three times. And I think there's one more that's repeated three times in a row. But, interesting enough, one of the three times is when one of the three times of an angel flying. There's only three times in the Bible an angel is shown as flying. Uh, Daniel, when Gabriel was made to cause to fly, fly swiftly. And then an angel saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then an angel was also flying, having the everlasting gospel. And you can really put those together. Uh, an angel was flying in heaven. One was saying, whoa, 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 because of the terrible things. The other one, though, had the everlasting gospel that could overcome those woes. Erin, I know we had talked about those. She's listening online. I had talked about those five things before. I, I know I left one of them out. The temple of the Lord, earth, woe, and holy. I think there's one more that's repeated three times in a row. But they don't hide their sins, so woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They caused this to themselves. They rewarded evil unto themselves. And it's interesting to declare their sin like Sodom. And we know what the sin there was, of course. And it could be any sin. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Even in the midst of a sinful nation or society, the righteous shall eat the fruit of their doings. They'll be fine. It doesn't mean that things won't happen around them, but they'll be saved. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. There can't be anything more simple than that to see what he's saying. As for my people, children of their oppressors, and women rule over them, O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy past. So they had digressed so far that children and women were leading them and ruling over them. It's not a slight against women, but just in this time in the Orient, women were not generally leaders and kings some were not kings queens Esther and the queen of the south Sheba uh, queen of Sheba but they had caused people that were generally physically weak to come in children and women to rule over them and people were causing them to err and destroy the way of thy past the Lord standeth up to plea and to standeth to judge the people the Lord so often in the Bible is pictured as sitting upon his throne but here he's standing up to plead, like to ask them to please come back and to judge his people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. The things they'd taken from people, literally, and opportunities and the truth, but there was a lot of, obviously, crime among them. He was going to judge them for this. What mean ye that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord of hosts? the oppressions they were causing upon the people. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and this is the way they were here. It talks about the things they have, and it would be opposite. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. I assume like it's like pride, and, and wanton means doing anything you want. Wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. They were dressed fine, things that would make noise and stretched out necks, maybe holding with pride. It's how they were living their lives. Therefore, the Lord was smite with a scab, the crown of the heads of the daughters of Zion. And Jehovah, or in the Lord, I was looking at the American Standard, will discover their secret parts. He's going to make them bare. A head was one place that, you know, women would... Uh, you know, they'd fix their hair and the such like. Well, he's going to strike them with baldness or with a scab, I'm sorry, and discover their secret parts. They would be as though disclosed. They, they would be laid bare, metaphorically speaking, because of their sins. 
And that day the Lord will take away the bravery, it says beauty here, of their tinkling, ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires. This would be things uh, like the moon. The things that they were wearing, anklets, uh, it says scarves and crescents, probably something about their neck. The fine clothes that the women had, he was going to take away. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, New King James says veils. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. Perfume boxes they had and amulets, maybe something around their neck. So we, we learn a lot about how the women were dressing and doing. Women were much like the women of today. They would fix up. Uh, I think about Exodus 38, 8, we learned that women used mirrors to fix themselves up. When he made the braver of la labor of brass at the foot of it, brass of the looking glasses of the women assembling. So they would use brass as mirrors. The women would assemble at the tabernacle, probably look in the mirrors to, you know, fix themselves up. But they gave that their mirrors to make the brass labor. But he's going to take away their earrings, the things that they had. The rings and nose jewels. We learn a little bit about how they dressed, how they fixed up. Earrings were very common this time. As a matter of fact, there's one group of people that all the men wore earrings. The men did. Who are they? They knew they were Ishmaelites because they had golden earrings. Uh, <coughs> And Gideon said, Now I would desire a request for you, you'd give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. So that was a mark of the Ishmaelites wearing golden earrings. The rings, I read this, and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, or shawls, the outer garments, and the crisping pins. Uh, they, these were just various things that they had to fix themselves up, to make themselves look better. Uh, the things that they wore. He's going to take all these away. The glasses, the mirrors, it says here. And the, we know Exodus, they already had mirrors. And the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. See, they were more concerned about their attire and how they looked than they were serving the Lord. And they weren't, and you know, unfortunately, so many are like that today. And we have to be careful that we in the church will not, uh, you know, do like that. And, uh, you know, the Lord has blessed us with fine things. We all have, uh, you know, good homes and warm. I hope you do, and I'm sure you do, and automobiles and so much to do with. It seems like we have more and more, but use it for the Lord. Never let, uh, the Lord likes for us to have. Uh, you know, He has given us all things to enjoy, we're told. But we need to use it right and have our hearts toward the Lord. Uh, it probably wouldn't hurt to look up that verse. Don't feel guilty when you have a lot of good things, but use it for the Lord. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17. Trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. But he took away their hand mirrors and the fine linen, the hoods, once it's two say turbans and the veils. And it shall come to pass, so here's the contrast. We're really, I always try to stop about a quarter till. We've got three more verses. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Like I said, their perfume is going to be something terrible smelling. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Instead of nice clothing about them, a tear. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, I admit I had to look up that word. A grinding of sackcloth, I had to look up a lot. And burning instead of beauty. But a stomacher, it just said, was a nice rich robe. I had to admit, I probably wouldn't say to a lady on the street, you have a nice stomacher. <laughs> Oh, that's from the King James. Walk away, two black eyes. You don't know the King James, do you? <laughs> and, but that's what did it, uh, obviously an old word. You know, give me just, I wonder if that's even in the dictionary. This dictionary is from 95, but most words are. <laughs> Stomacher, sure enough, a garment, article of clothing. A stomacher was a heavily embroidered or jeweled garment formerly worn over the chest and stomach, especially by women. So, you probably haven't heard that used today out of this context here. But instead of a stomacher, a uh, girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Two more verses. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty men in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn. And she being desolate shall set up on the ground. 
So terrible things are going to come upon them. All their fine things would be taken away, turned into awful things. The men would be killed, and they would set, lament, and mourn. And, and it did come to pass, of course. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in and took Jerusalem and burned it, and these things did come to pass. Is there anything else here? Now, next week will only be six verses, but we'll... we'll I, wanted, I started going to five, but it, I felt it was such a change of thought that I didn't want to take away from four and from five by combining them together. And Aaron reminded me of the fifth ter- uh, word I could not think of, overturn, overturn, overturn. So five things in the Bible that are repeated for emphasis three times. Overturn, uh, the temple of the Lord, uh, woe, 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 holy, 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 and earth, earth, earth. And so those are the five things that are repeated three times in the Bible, right in a row. I don't think there's a six, but I may be wrong. One may pop into my mind. But let me knock on their door, and I'll pass the lessons around. Is there anything else while we wait for them to come out? Turn, if you will, is an invitation song. Number 667. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? I always like to look at an invitation from the uh, chapter that we went over. And I thought I'd look at Isaiah 3 8. Said Jerusalem was ruined, Judah's fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord. You know, that's really the two main ways that we express our service to the Lord is our words, whether in, you know, studying and praising, preaching, singing, I may have said praying, or our doings, the things we do for the Lord. That's the way that we express and show and do for the Lord. But their doings and tongues were against the Lord and provoked His eyes. And of course, we read through the chapter of the ruin that was going to come upon them because of this. Are the things we do, the things we say, for or against the Lord? Are we glorifying His name or are we bringing shame and reproach? And of course, that choice is ours. Now, they could. Re- he told the, uh, the righteous that it'll be well with him, but to the wicked, it will be ill with him. So whatever situation we're in, you can change if you need to. I know all the adults looking among the audience are members of the Lord's body and all the ones that are listening, at least I know of. And of course, this is recorded and on YouTube and could be played years later. But if you have never obeyed the Lord, if you can hear this, you have opportunity to. Certainly believe on the Lord, but turn from your sins and repentance, confess His name. Then baptism, it's a submersion completely underwater, covered totally, just for a moment as a burial then we arise to a new life. It washes away our sins, we're told in the book of Acts. If you've done that and fallen away, you need to repent and pray for forgiveness. The Lord has given us easy terms, and we'll sing the first verse of 667 as we stand. The voice of the Savior says, Come, the cross where He died is in sight. E now at the cross there is room. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Are you coming to Jesus tonight? 
Are you coming to Jesus tonight? The bride and the Spirit invite. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Turn, if you will, as a closing song. Let's sing the last verse of uh, number 19. And then we'll ask Jacob Stevens visiting with us to dismiss us in prayer. It's good to have each one here this evening and those who are listening online. Don't forget our services Sunday, Lord's Day at 9 o'clock. Of course, Ruby won't be here probably for a week and a half. She, she planned on being here, but uh, needs to go to Arkansas Saturday. And uh, sort of open-ended when she'll return according to how much care her parents need. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Keep Ruby in prayer. She flies back tomorrow from Minnesota. It's a short flight. It's only a two-hour flight. But, you know, it's uh, two minutes is too much of a flight for me. I, I, it's all right, but it's a uh, 603-mile flight, and they can make it in two hours. So that means they're doing 300 miles an hour, which is eh, sort of, I sort of say slow for a jet, but uh, they don't have to get up to a great speed from Minneapolis to Louisville. And then I'll go be picking her up, and hopefully we'll be back just in time. Uh, Ruby will be for the ladies' Bible class. And so any that are here that haven't, hasn't gotten uh, Google Hangout set up, just stay a few minutes afterwards, and I'll get that set up for you. Is there anything else? Sing the, uh, continue to remember our sick. I don't think I mentioned them at the beginning. Mom isn't with us. She just can't get out in this cold. And, and Alice, my sister, continue to remember her, the pain that she's suffering. Uh, Ruby's parents, of course. Brad Terry with uh, cancer. Larry uh, has his other knee replaced December 1st, isn't it? Third. He had one knee done uh, March 1st and has been very uh, successful with it. It really did a great job. And so he's going to have the, he goes, uh, he won't be here Sunday night. He's going for the preliminaries to have that uh, done. That'll be done in Nashville. Continue to remember Vicki McDaniel and others as well. Vicki had a little bit of bad luck. She had gone to uh, E-Town to visit an elderly friend, a friend of her mother's, her mother since passed. And this was Monday night. Of course, it was very cold, and they got in the vehicle to go somewhere and turn on the rear defroster and heard a big pop just totally busted the window, <laughs> the heating and the cold. And so she, uh, fortunately, they had a neighbor let them put it in the garage, so they got it fixed up there. If there is nothing else, let's sing the last verse of 19. Appreciate all being here and our visitors as well. Hold thou thy cross be for my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point me to the sky as morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee in life in death O Lord above before Jacob leads us in prayer I want because some came in late keep Ruby's dad in prayer reason Ruby's going out so soon he's having some cancer removed off of his forehead on Monday and it's too far for them to drive so she's going out and just uh, remember him in prayer at that let us pray
and Sister Ruby as she works as well. This entire congregation, we pray that you would continue to bless them as they stand for your word, stand for your truth. We thank you, Father, for giving you the opportunity to die on the cross and save us from our sins. We ask that, Father, that you forgive us for any sins we have to do. Heal us as we leave here. In Christ's name we pray.